Welcome, everybody. This is the Faith Lutheran Online webinar, or as we like to call it, Flow. I'm Michelle Dwyer. I'm the Director of Admissions and Marketing, and the panelists with me tonight include Anna Orr. She's the Director of our Flow program. Jen Whitney, she is our Admissions Counselor, and she processes all the documents and answers all the questions. And then Dan Baikema, who is our high school assistant principal and the keeper of all of the knowledge of the scheduling questions. So he'll be answering a lot of questions for us tonight. Thank you for joining us. We will be posting this on our website as well. So if you have to duck out early, that's totally fine. You'll be able to catch the end of it. We will be taking questions as we go. So if, as you think of questions, there should be an option for Q&A on your Zoom menu. So just pop your question in there. And then we will either answer it by typing an answer out for you, or uh, we'll answer it out loud um, in the section that it goes in. All right, so let's get started. This is our team. So there's a lot of us who have been um, working on flow. Uh, Anna Orr has been doing um, so much work the past few years to get it up and running. As I mentioned, Mr. Baikma has been um, working tirelessly to make the schedules work. Um, I work along with the team as well as Jen and then Ashlyn's not with us tonight, but she, um, she answers a lot of questions in the admissions office as well. And then our phone number and email address are there if you have any questions that you want to just chat through or email about. So first, maybe you join this wondering what flow is in the first place. So we wanted to answer that for you. So um, Faith Lutheran Online uh, just kind of naturally became flow because that's what it spells, um, kind of against our, <laughs> against what we wanted it to be, but here we are. So I launched in 20, 2021, um, kind of out of COVID, but we had seen a need before that even, that's our mascot, Crusader Lou. We developed a program to reach more students and provide flexible educational options. And it's currently for high school students, only our high school credit. In the 23-24 school year, so the current school year right now, we had 41 new students, brand new students to faith, admitted to the FLOW program, and 175 current students participating in the FLOW program. So at Faith Lutheran, we have four high school program types. We call them program types. So our most traditional is the diploma seeking fully on campus. With that, a student could take one to two classes online as well, um, especially pending space. So for example, um, some of our freshman classes fill up, but we want to get more freshmen on campus. So they might have one class online, but they're still considered a fully on-campus student. Our hybrid option is a mix of on-campus and online classes. And we'll show you kind of what some of those mixes look like later and what a schedule could look like. Then we have diploma seeking fully online students. So all eight classes are online. And then we have credit seeking, which is not for diploma, but these are single online courses or socks as we hate to call them, but that's what it spells. So we have our flow and our socks and those are just single online courses. Um, if you wanna take just an extra course in something or for students going to a different school that doesn't offer um, something like an AP class or geometry. So we have students who take single online courses with us. Anything to add to that, Mrs. Orr? Awesome. Interrupt me, panelists, if you if I miss something. So to give you a little bit more um, information about our SOCs. So these are students who only take a single class from Faith Lutheran Online. So again, it doesn't add up to a full diploma. Um, these would be maybe an advanced class not offered at their current school. Um, they're not considered a full Faith Lutheran student and it can't be used to graduate early. We don't graduate students early. If you are a current full-time student at Faith and you want to take an extra course, so you want to take nine, it would be called an overload schedule, and you would need approval to do that. We would look at, make sure that your grades are good, um, that your time would be um, sufficient to be able to add that in. We don't want our students to be so overloaded that, that they don't succeed, and that would be through your counselor or through Mr. Baikema for scheduling that. Um, this is also available for mediation classes. Let's say you didn't do super well or something happened and you couldn't finish a class. You could do that um, single online course over the summer um, or during the school year. And then you would work on this class as it fits your weekly schedule um, and they're 15 week courses. And again, we'll get into more schedule things a little later. 
So that's the overview. So life as a flow student, this is what it would look like. And through the presentation, we have a number of QR codes. We thought that, that would be easier than trying to switch to the page and show it to you. So you're welcome to scan these um, with your phone as I talk. So benefits of being a flow student include um, that all flow students are full faith Lutheran students, not our just if you're just taking one single course, but you go to a different school. But these are students who are taking either hybrid or fully online. So that means that all your credits go toward a faith Lutheran diploma. It's not a watered down diploma. When you apply to colleges, it says you went to faith Lutheran, you're a graduate. And our, our diplomas carry a lot of weight in the college world. We have students at high level colleges all over the country and all over the world. Um, it also, uh, one of the benefits is that we have a tiered tuition. So I've provided the financial policies for 24, 25 school year there. You can read through that and see how our pricing structure is for our flow students. We have very flexible scheduling and um, that, that can look however you need it to look. We want, we, can, we want to fit the kind of students that are interested. And then you can participate in all school activities. So clubs, sports, dances, pep rallies, uh, student interest groups. If you if you logged on early and heard us talking about Lego Club, you could join the Lego Club, even if you're a fully online student or a hybrid student. We, in fact, we want you to be involved. So it can be um, kind of isolating to take some classes online. Um, and so we want you to be in, involved on student, in student life as much as possible. So I see that we have a question. So um, have, sorry. Yeah, no, go we ahead. Have a, we have a sock question, and maybe Mr. Bikema can answer this. So if there's a student that's trying to do a class for remediation, how does that look on their transcript at the other school? Does it say Faith Lutheran, or does it say um, the school they're at, or how does it read? It, it will be up to your, it would be up to the other school. So it's completely up to the other school whether they will even accept our credits as transfer. Um, some some schools are pretty persnickety about things like that, but uh, if they will accept our credit as transfer and will accept our, our online classes as um, remediation, then what they will typically do is they will have it look like, it'll say on the transcript either out of district or it might say Faith Lutheran um, Junior Senior High School on it. Um, our, what we do is we will put the name of the school. So if a student transfers here from, say, Servite Catholic High School in, in Southern California a, as a sophomore in their freshman year, we'll say Servite Catholic High School as their freshman year, and then it'll move on. Um, and so it, it's completely up to the school whether they will accept the credit. So you want to double check that first and encourage them to call us, call Mrs. Orr, call me, call admissions if they are um, interested in finding out about our program so that they can determine whether that counts for them or not. Um, and then how it looks on their transcript is, is up to them. Great, thank you. And again, if you have more questions, you can always type them in that Q&A section. All right, flow classes. So speaking of flow classes, so, um, they're all asynchronous. So I know that maybe you have some PTSD from the COVID days. That means that it's there's no live Zoom. Your student does not join a Zoom during the week. They don't have to be on their class at a specific time of day. So if their um, assignment is due Wednesday, they could work on it Sunday night, Monday morning, anytime before it's due on that Wednesday. If it's due Saturday, they can work anytime during the week. Um, and they're all NIAA accredited. So that really carries a lot of weight. So that remediation question, our, our courses are accredited. So um, that can that allows a lot of schools to accept those credits. There are high school credit classes. Um, it's our faith curriculum. We don't buy the curriculum from anybody. Mrs. Orr develops a lot of it. Other, other teachers contribute to that. And our teachers are teaching the material as well. One of the major benefits of that is that if you are a flow student and your class is online, but you know your teacher is in the building Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., and you have a question, you can always go meet in person with them. So that's really beneficial because, and our teachers want that. They want to uh, connect with you. Um, our grand, sorry, our platform and our tech support is all through Grand Canyon University. They're not university level classes, but they are, um, we use their platform and tech support, which is really helpful. 
We have um, a class catalog, a course catalog is that QR code that'll take you right to our website. And then you scroll down and you'll see the tab for Faith Lutheran Online. You can see a list of all of our courses. Mrs. Orr, how many classes do we have available now? I know you're building new ones every day. Um, at the moment, we've got, I believe, 85 semester courses. Um, and then I've got another 10 to 15 that are currently being built. Great. So it is entirely possible to take your whole four years of high school online, completely online. So we've got plenty of classes for that. Um, yes, we have another question. Go ahead. Um, are they NCAA approved for those kids that are looking to do sports and college sports? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. When we built the program, that was really important to us. Our um, athletes are one of our biggest demographic for flow because if you especially are a, an athlete that practices a lot in the morning or has af long afternoon practices or travels a lot, then our flexibility of scheduling, which you'll see in a few slides, is really beneficial for our athletes. One of the, I can I can qualify one of the statements we said earlier. There was a statement that, which is in generally in general true, but not necessarily true, is we mm -hmm. don't graduate students early. The mm -hmm. reality of that is we don't graduate students early without special permission. So there have been students who have graduated in December of their senior year because they are say going off to play college football and they want to they want to start college in January so that they could be at spring football practices at their university. Um, that's one of the benefits of, of being able to take classes online so that you can line yourself up. Um, in fact, we have a student, we have a, a soccer player this year who is graduating in December so that she can be at University of Washington in January. Um, and we have a football player who's graduating in December next year uh, specifically for that reason, so that he can be um, at college um, practices in class in January of of his of twenty five. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. Um, we are also adding more options every year. So, and we Mrs. Orr is great about taking suggestions for that too. Like, hey, have you considered making this a flow class? I would love to see this kind of option, and she's um, tirelessly building those as well. Most classwork totals about three to four hours a week. The honors and AP classwork is gonna total about five to six hours a week. So these classes are not blow off classes. They're not um, a watered down version of our faith curriculum. They're gonna be a full, full experience, um, full rigor. And we want our students to be really well prepared for college and their next steps after that, um, even if they are online students. Any questions right now? Yes, go ahead. Cool. Um, are the summer classes more intense because they're a shorter pan of time? Yes, they're the same class um, as the 15 week course, except they're condensed into that eight weeks. So there is um, the summer courses, we, we recommend taking only one or two classes in the summer. Um, simply because you're doubling up on each week, each week week's worth. Then mm -hmm. um, those hours listed, those are per class. So that's three to four hours per week per class, correct? Correct, correct. That's, it's like sitting in class for your 90 minutes a day. Um, you know, the, the reading that you've been assigned, any other homework that you've been assigned. I, I, I try to tell students, there's, there's this, idea out there for whatever reason that people will escape to online they believe that online classes are going to be easier than regular classes and and i would say online classes are actually harder than regular classes um, for the reason that mrs Ward just mentioned if you're coming to school every day and you have to be here from 7 40 until you know 2 45 every day um, then you then you have to be here. You're sitting here, you're gonna sit there in math and watch the lecture and the notes anyway, and then maybe be able to get started on your homework during class. If you're in a project-based class, say like a computer science class or a graphics design class, um, you're gonna be able to, there's gonna be some classroom things that are done by the teacher, and then you're gonna have time to work on your project. When you're in online school, 
those classes, all that time is your time. All that time needs to be set aside by you to make sure that you have time to watch the lecture, take the notes, read the notes, do the assignment, all of that stuff. It's not, it's, it's not easier. I just want to make sure that everyone understands that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So um, now we're going to go through some class schedule things to, um, to help everybody understand what this is looking like. So our basic daily class schedule at Faith Lutheran, we have a we have what's called a block schedule. So it's a maroon day and a gold day, every, and they switch every other day. And you take eight classes per semester. So we only have four a day. So each class is about 80 minutes long. That seems like a long time until you're in it. And you're like, oh, I'm so glad I had time to work on homework today um, in my class. So um when you, if you are mixing in online classes, that kind of gets a little bit funky. So we wanted to show you some practice schedules or some hypothetical schedules. First, this is what a two week cycle would look like at our school. So the first week would be maroon gold. And these are five day weeks, obviously. Um, so maroon gold, maroon gold, maroon gold. And then the next week it would start with a gold because you ended up with the maroon. So I want to show this to you because um, sometimes we have parents ask if they if their kid can have every Monday and Friday off or every Wednesday off. But if your if your flow class block um, is maroon, or if you have all of your classes for flow, all of your on campus classes are on a gold day, then you wouldn't be able to do every every Thursday off because not every Thursday is going to be a gold day. So, for example, um, here's a sample. Uh, afternoon schedule. So we can do where you have afternoons as flow classes, which means that you would be able to um, leave campus or, or work in a study hall room or a designated work area. So these would be for our students who need to go either go work or go practice um, schedules or sorry, practice a sport or practice um, music, or we have some actors and actresses who need that time to go um, do auditions and things like that. This is what a four and four, so four on campus and four online schedule would look like. So maroon day, you would be in class for M1 and M2, like on campus. Then you would have, you would leave for the afternoon. And then gold day, you would be in class for G1 and G2 and then leave for the afternoon. I see we have, oh, we had a question, but that was, okay, okay perfect. So our next sample schedule, this is would be if you wanted mornings to be more open. And I wanted to show you a three and five option. So you might have, you could request um, one morning, have two blocks open so you can arrive late or you can arrive at the same time and just work in a designated working area. Um, it's, it's up to you, but then you would be in on campus for M2, M3, M4 and G3 and G4. So those are our kind of two when you have the grouped. I'll show that to you one more time. So this is when you have them grouped together. So your flow classes are grouped in the afternoon. And then this is when they're grouped in the morning. And that's not necessarily when you have to be completing those flow classes. Mm -hmm. There, it, It's a time too, but if you have, you know, if you've got 130 soccer practice, and aren't home until five, you can work on that class at five. That's fine. You've got you've got the time in there. It doesn't have to be at a at a set given time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. And then we have a we had a question: Are there six on campus and two flow option? So that's not actually considered a hybrid schedule because all of our fully on campus students could have up to two online classes just for the sake of space. Um, but yes, that is an option for students to do. So then this would be a sample schedule of one day on campus and one day off. So this would be that your student would be in school all day on this maroon day, and then they would be at home on that gold day. And again, they can work on those, they can work on their classes on that gold day, or they could work all day Saturday if they have something to do on that gold day. Um, your, your time is your own when you're a flow student. And so that's what it's, that's the flexibility that's been really, um, really helpful. We do have some students who um, come on their day, their off day to work with teachers um, during their planning period. So a teacher might have second block open so that student will 
get a ride to school and come work with that teacher um, to get some explanation and whatnot. So um, we have that option as well. Or if there's a pep rally in there on the dance team, they are certainly um, you know, included and welcome. We want them to be part of that. And then here's a schedule. Um, I would say, Mr. Beckman, would you say this is the most common schedule or is, is it kind of all over the map? No, five, yeah, five and three, five on campus and three online is the most common, yes. Yeah, with them kind of sprinkled in in the middle, right? Yeah, or or at the or the end or the beginning, but three online classes is the most common hybrid mm -hmm. version, yes. So for this schedule, your student would be in class maroon one and maroon four. So in the middle of the day, it's hard to if they don't drive themselves. Um then they would just stay in a designated working area. If they're freshmen, they'll be assigned to a study hall just because we we want them to be focused and learn how to focus. Um, and then on goal day, same thing, they would have that G3 open. And again, they don't have to work on a specific class at that time. They could you know, do, what, do whatever in that time, um, but it is a time that they have to work on class. So if they wanna wait till 10 p.m. at night, they can. But we, we would obviously suggest that they have that open time during the day to work on that class. Yes, we have another question. Do flow teachers have specific office hours online or in person for students? Yes, about uh, this semester, about half of our teachers are on campus faith teachers. Um, and they're available during... Um, you know, on campus before and after school, sometimes um, during their prep or or during um, advisory time. Um, but all of our flow teachers do uh, have office hours after 3 p.m. Um, where they're available for, you know, to immediately answer an email, to jump on a Zoom call um, and work through, work through a problem. Um, you know, chat with them on, uh, in the discussion board, you know, we, we, we do have, we do have that available. And if it's outside of those hours, um, all of our classes do have, um, do have um, tutor.com available as well. And that's a 24 hour a day, seven day a week option. And another question, with this schedule, can you leave campus for those two flow blocks? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you, you, we just have all students check in and out through the office so that we know where they are, but they're welcome to leave for those two blocks and come back. All right, if there are no other questions, we'll go on. So this is um, a sample, like a weekly schedule. This is an actual student schedule. And um, this was born out of a student wondering kind of, learning to schedule their open time. So where it says study hall on Mondays, they were kind of struggling with, well, what do I do during study hall? And I have the same problem. Every Monday I have to, I have to write a new to-do list to make sure I schedule my time, right? So parents, as you're listening um, and you're thinking, okay, can my student handle the openness and the freedom of this schedule? Um, there's a lot of opportunity for time management skills in this as well. So okay, you have M1 and M3 on this schedule. So what do you want to get done during that time? You know, you're going to have a biology thing for flow biology, or you know, you're going to work on your CSP class. So just get it done during that time. It's not a sign that they have to do it during that time. It's they could work on it, like I said, at 10 p.m. at night, but why would you do that if you have Monday morning open for that? So then if they stuck to this schedule, they would have Saturday and Sunday free because they did all their work during the week. Wouldn't that be awesome to have the weekend open? Are there any questions? This is just a sample. So any questions? Okay. So a fully online schedule is exactly what it sounds like. You would have eight fully online classes. They're all asynchronous. So again, there's no Zoom, there's no required. You have to be online at your computer at this time. Um, you work on your classes as it fits your schedule, but you do have due dates for assignments, generally Wednesdays and Sundays. And you're welcome, all students are welcome to come on campus at any time for school. They would check in through the office. Um, especially we want you on campus for activities, for chapel, for sports, for pep rallies. Um, if they're part of a student fundraiser group and they're selling, they're having 
a bake sale at lunch, please come for lunch and, you know, do that. Um, and they all would have official Faith Lutheran student IDs to get them into all those activities, especially games. Um, they can participate in any sports clubs, et cetera. Um, all of our honor societies are open to them as well. Um, we have another question, Mr. Beichmann, I think this one would be best for you. When students are scheduling their classes, will they know what day and time the classes are offered? When when they are requesting their classes, they won't yet know when when the day and times they're offered. Um, so they should when they're requesting, they should just request the classes that they are interested in, um, and then the schedule will be built from there. Once the schedule is actually completed, won't be until May ish, probably about May fifteenth. Um, I usually like to re um, release those schedules for students to see um the first monday of june um, and then they have all summer until the end of the first week first full week of class to make changes to their schedule um and so but in the springtime a lot of you if you're brand new students to faith lutheran and you are admitted and you are going to come um you're going to end up talking to me on the phone or we're going to end up emailing back and forth um or we're going to zoom together or you're going to come down to campus and we're going to sit down and we're going to meet because you have specific things that you want for your schedule and you're going to make sure that you let me know that and then i'm going to do the best that i possibly can to make sure that everybody's schedule looks the way they want it to look by the time they get it in june so that they don't have to be making requests if you are you know you, you you're a club swimmer who practices in the mornings and isn't going to be able to get to school by 7 40 so it would be better for you to have mornings off um and then not start until second block then you're going to email me that in the spring and i'm going to make note of it and i'm going to try to make sure that your schedule or i probably will almost guarantee that i'll be able to make sure that your schedule meets those needs as an example mm -hmm. and we have many sections of most classes so you know, if you need to take sophomore English, then we have a lot of different options, like timing wise for that. So with a school our size, it's a benefit that we have as well. There's about 15, there's about 15 sections of every core class at Faith mm -hmm. Um, So there's only eight blocks in the two day block schedule. So and 15 sections put in the, into those eight blocks. So every single time of day is available for any core class for sure. In terms of chapel advisory and activities, so we do have chapel once a week, and all flu all flow students will be assigned to chapel and advisories based on their campus class schedules. So, for example, if you have on campus, if you're a hybrid student and you have an on campus class first and second block, you would be expected to be at chapel. Um, if you don't have an on campus class first and second block, you would be assigned to a chapel if you choose to come, but you do not have to come to chapel. Am I correct in that, Mr. Beckema? Yes. So yeah, it only if you're assigned a first and second, if you have a first or second block on campus or a study hall, um, then you will be assigned a chapel and you'll be expected to be there. If you don't start every day until third block, then you won't be assigned a chapel likely unless you want to be. Um, and then you will just let us know and we will make sure to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you come to campus uh, on a day and you, you don't have to be there and it happens to be chapel, you're welcome to join us at any time as well. Um, same thing for advisory. So students use that time for, we have devotion groups sometimes. We have, that's a time to work with teachers. We have student groups that meet. So you would be assigned an advisory and welcome to be here. You would just check into the office. Uh, we also have chapel available on the website as a live stream to attend if chapel happens on a day that you're not on campus. And we, again, we want flow students to participate in on-campus activities. We have a link coordinator. Link is our new student um, coordinator. So if you're a brand new student to faith and you're like, but how am I going to meet people if I'm an online student? Um, we will make sure that you meet people, you get involved, and you'll be encouraged to come to campus and meet with teachers and classmates. So we've given you a lot of information, but we want to make sure you know what it takes to be a successful flow student. We're learning as we go. Um, that this program is not for every single type of student. Online classes can be really difficult. Um, even as a grown up taking them, I'm like, oh, I just really don't want to do this today. But you have to, um, you have to have a lot of grit to do it. 
Um, our flow students who are very successful are responsible students. They're motivated. They can plan ahead and they have strong time management skills. This um, one pager information, um, th this is what we give our flow students to help them. We want you to manage your time. We want you to ask for help. You're not on an island. You're not by yourself. Um, you do need to have, have a set space to do your classes. So um, laying on your floor with your music blasting is probably not a great way to focus. So um, do you have a desk? Are you able to kind of focus? Um, eliminate distraction, distractions and actively participate in your classes. You're going to get out of your classes what you put into your classes and your teachers want your participation. They want your interest. And then you'll have to check your email regularly, parents and students. That's our primary way that we communicate. And that's a very grown up thing that, you know, you have to check your email every day, um, more than once a day. But to be an online student, that's what it takes. So anything to add to that, anybody? All right. So some frequently asked questions that we get, um, just to kind of head off some of those. Is missing a study hall an absence? Mr. Bikema, can you talk about absences um, in regards to hybrid students? Yes. Um, so attendance is actually an official record um, and we have to keep an official record of who is on campus and who is not on campus at any given time. Um, and so, if you are assigned a study hall, you are not required to be there. It does not matter if you're there. It does not matter if you're absent, but we will record an absence if you are not there because we're required to keep an official record of who's here and who isn't. Uh, an actual class, you know, like English, then there are, yeah, you have to be in English in order to get credit for English. If, you, if you're absent from an English class um, too many times, then you could lose credit for that class or any on ground class, but study hall in general doesn't matter. Perfect. And you you aren't counted absence from absent from flow classes. That's not a it's not a possibility because you don't log in and like Zoom with anybody. So correct. We do we do keep track of who uh, if if you're missing like if you haven't turned in anything for that week, um, and it's important that you show up for at least one item each week, um, especially since we're moving at a faster pace than you are on campus. And our late work policies are, are different than they are on campus. Um, you have one week past the due date to get your late work in, otherwise it's a zero. So if you aren't doing your work, you're not getting the grade, uh, but we don't, no, we don't count absences against you. Well, I, I mean, if you are, if you don't participate in any way in a class for a consecutive number of weeks, then you are no longer taking that class. So we are keeping track of that. So in mm -hmm. a summer eight week class, what is it? Two consecutive weeks of no participation. Is that what it is, Mrs. Orr? It's, it's um, or is it three? Three. It's three consecutively or non-consecutively. And then in a 15 week class, it would be five weeks consecutively with no participation means you're just automatically dropped from the class and will not get credit. So mm -hmm. that's essentially what attendance is in an online class is participation during the week. So mm -hmm. if you're letting an entire week go by and you haven't participated in any discussion or turned any assignment in, then you're going to be counted absent, quote unquote absent for that week. Mm -hmm. Too many of those can hurt. Yeah, absolutely. And then for sports, like I said, athletes are one of our biggest groups that we have. Um, so accommodations for sports, we've developed um, some schedules where students, like Mr. Bikema mentioned, it's hard to get to school by 740 because of ice skating or swimming or whatever tennis practice in the morning. Um, so we have those afternoon schedules for you, like on-campus classes. Um, same thing for those who need to leave early for the day. We can schedule all your on-campus classes for the morning. So that way your afternoons are your own and you can do your sport in the afternoon and then do your homework at night um, or your flow classes at night. We can also, you know, we can, we can mix that up in a lot of different ways. So this is also a good idea for students who travel quite a bit. We can't do, you know, all Fridays and Mondays off, but if you only have one on-campus class that you're missing on a Friday, 
then that's much easier to make up than, um, you know, a full four classes that you miss every Friday because you travel. Um, and then switching programs, we've had some questions about, so, you know, I'm an actress and I need to take October off for filming. We can't switch you to a fully online can um, schedule just for a month. It's, um, it's a semester to semester um, program. Is that correct, Mr. Baikama? Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're there for the semester. So if you know you're going to be filming or working on a project or traveling for, you know, January through March, then that second semester might be a good time to do fully online or that first semester would be your on campus. So um, like I said, we have flexibility for that. Um, and we have a lot of sections of each kind of class, especially core classes. Electives are a little bit more difficult. So if there's a very specific elective that you're interested in, um, you'll have to take a look at that with your counselor or scheduler. But we do have flexibility in switching programs. You just have to do it at semester. And I have a schedule of, you know, the deadlines for that as well. It's, it's, it's much more difficult to switch from hybrid or online to on campus because on campus spots are the most popular spots so those are the spots that fill up um so it's it's a you may end up on a wait list so in september you decide hey uh, this online thing i don't like it i want to be on campus i want to ask to be on campus starting in january we can't guarantee that um, there will be a wait, we'll keep a wait list for those spots if the spots become available in January. Um, so if there's a question of whether or not you should do online or flow or, or hybrid or you should do on ground, um, the safest bet is to, is to apply to be fully on campus um, because if you have to move to hybrid, that's an easy move. If you have to move to online, that's an easy move to go from online to on ground is much more difficult, um, move less spots available. Mm -hmm. So if you are a brand, if you're a current faith student, then um, I have a process for you too. But if you're brand new, you're not a student yet, applying is just like applying for on campus. So I put a QR code to apply. You could apply while we talk right now. Um, and you'll choose, um, if you know you wanna be a hybrid student or fully online, you would choose that application. If you're not sure, you can fill out the general application and then you have that option as well. It's a non-refundable $50 fee to apply and we need your documents by December. Um, we do all of our recommendations electronically. So you'll type in the email address and name of the person that we're sending it to and they're sent back um, confidentially to us. And then we'll need student grades for the last three school years. And if your student could be a fit for Faith Lutheran, they'll be invited to interview in January and you'll receive an admissions de decision in February or March. Decisions will be released late February, early March. Um, and then we have rolling admissions decisions after that through the beginning of August, just depending on space. And then due to space and in the school and the number of applications, hybrid schedules may be offered to you if a fully on campus schedule is not available. What that means is, so you applied for freshman year. Freshman year is one of our biggest um, application years. So, hey, you know, all we, the best we can offer you is um, three hybrid, three online classes and five on campus classes. That might be the only way that you could be a faith student with us. Um, if you wanted to be fully online, then you'll have to wait on the waiting list. So I just wanted to give you that. Um, possibility. We did have a waiting pool for um, freshmen and sophomores this year, in addition to our middle school, but this is about high school. So just um, know that. But we were able to offer 41 more kids a spot as a Faith Lutheran student because of the flexibility of Faith Lutheran Online. So we had 41 kids who hadn't been thinking of hybrid necessarily, but they took the schedule and made the most of it um, and did really well. And um, they're able to be part of our sports and be part of our program and earn our diploma, um, even though they didn't have a fully on-campus spot. So if you want to be considered for that, then just complete your checklist by December. So enrollment and tuition. Um, enrollment, are, again, here's our financial policies. So our enrollment activity fee, um, if you're offered a spot, it's $1,000 um, due when you sign your contract. Our fully on-campus 
uh, tuition for next year is 15,500. A fully online student is about half of that, so 7,200. So there's a significant price difference. And then our hybrid tuition is tiered, and you can see that in the financial policy. So it goes um, down from 15,000 to 7,000. So it stair steps down. We also have payment options available and financial aid available. Um, and those applications are in January. And then additional costs would be uniforms, unless you're a fully online student, then you wear what you want because you're at your house. Um, if you come on campus for an activity, we would expect you to be in a uniform polo. So you might need like one polo, maybe two. Um, and then books, but many of our online classes, the book, the book is um, in the class um, material. So you wouldn't have to buy a whole lot of extra books for that. And then financial aid is available to any of our programs. So fully online all the way through. And those applications open on January 1st. And then you would have an answer. Um, just they have, they release rolling answers. So you could know by February, you could know by April. And we also accept funds from the Nevada Choice Opportunity Scholarship. So here's our calendar. Um, our, our fall term started August 21st, which was about um, two weeks after our regular classes started, and then you can see um, that our fall term ends a little bit earlier than our regular term. Our regular term ends December 20th, 20th, I think. Um, and then January um, 8th is our application deadline for our January classes because they start January 15th. And we want to make sure that you have enough time to get set up and hit the ground running. May 5th is when the spring term ends, which is about um, a week or two before our regular terms. And then our summer classes, our registration opens April 15th. We have summer term from June 3rd to July 28th. And then the whole process starts over again. <laughs> All right, so we'd love to connect with you. If you are a current phase student and you are interested in a program change, either at semester, so in just a few weeks, or for next school year, talk to your assigned counselor about a program change. If you're not sure who that is, if you just wander through the counselor hallway shouting your last name, they will tell you who you belong to. <laughs> and then new student, or you can go see Mr. Baikama. He would love to visit you. Um, if you're a new student, new applicants, you would choose hybrid or online application when you apply. Um, and then everybody, if you're here and you're interested in anything that we said tonight, we would love for you to scan this code and fill out this interest form. This will gather your contact information and we will funnel you to the right person to talk to. So whether you're a current student, new student, you haven't applied yet, you don't even know why you joined this webinar, you just saw the link and clicked on it. No matter what, fill out that interest form so we can connect with you um, and we know what you're interested in before we cold call you. And then if you want to see Faith in person, we would love to have you. Look at this cute QR code I made. I got really excited about this one. I put this little graphic <laughs> in the middle of it. Um, we have an open house coming up on January 13th. That's between 9 and 11. And we'll have a bunch of teachers on campus, a bunch of administrators will be there. Um, we'll have some goodies, some giveaways. Um, Esther, our comfort dog, might be there. So we would love to see you there. It's free. It's um, come and go. So if you want to come for 30 minutes or you want to stay for a full two hours, um, you're welcome to. We really appreciate you coming tonight and, and um, hanging out with us. If you have any more questions, you can contact any of us um, at these email addresses. Um, or if you just have a general admissions question, you can give us a call or send us an email. Thank you so much for coming and have a great night.